With the help of Print Nation and Game Buzz, the Shellshock Band Royalty t-shirt is out now. You can message them through Facebook, Game Buzz, and Print Nation. Band Royalty t-shirt, Shellshock, is out. Get it now. What's up guys, it's your boy Shellshock from CTUSA Mini 4-Wheel Drive Racing Squad and I'm a teacher here in Noob Works and today's episode is going to be another chassis series. Uh, we're going to go back to 2013 when Tamiya decided to release their heaviest chassis, Dual Shaft, MA Chassis. So we're going to go in-depth with this MA Chassis, we're going to talk about the brief history about it, we're going to talk about stats, strength and, strength and weaknesses, and we're going to build this chassis for you guys. Again, this is straight out from the box. And before I start the video, I want to say shout out to all the California people over there. The Lane Change Boys, Change Lane Boys, uh, Monard, Queer Well, Queer Junes, Big X, and other racers over there. It's a cool ass shirt. Check it out. Thank you so much for the free shirt. And uh, also, in this video, uh, this chassis series is going to be a little bit different because at the end of the video up there, I talk about all the stats and uh, history about it, all about that you need to know about MA Chassis. Uh, Roscoe will be at the end and he's going to give you some tips about um, uh, building a modified class or uh, open class uh, MA chassis and then hope you like it. Again, shout out Roscoe. Let's check out the video. The MA chassis is a mini four-wheel drive chassis released by Tamiya in June 2013. It was first released with Blast Arrow. The MA stands for Midship Arrow. The MA chassis is essentially an MS chassis with many aerodynamic designs of the AR chassis. The chassis is now in one-piece monocoque frame instead of three pieces mojo like the MS chassis was. Like the AR chassis, the secondary parts were molded in low-friction POM or polyoxymethylene plastic, eliminating the brass bearing eyelets. This improves the chassis speed and acceleration performances. Also borrowed from the AR chassis is the rear skid bar, providing braking on the slopes section of the race course. Unlike AR chassis, the underbody of the chassis were smooth as there's no parts except the turn type battery switch under them, and there's also an air duct for dissipate heat from the motor, which then expels through the battery switch's holes. The side guards, which were absent from previous chassis since MS chassis, has also returned, allowing users to install stability poles or mass dampers on them. The front bumper and rear roller stays has been extended, which results in smoother cornering and better stability. Whereas the MS chassis used the clip lock mechanism for the gear and motor cover parts, which requires twisting the whole chassis to remove it, the MA chassis has the slide lock mechanism for dot parts, allowing easy maintenance. The gears and pinion gears were remains the, as, the same as MS chassis. Since most of the features are borrowed from AR chassis, it is compatible with parts made for AR chassis, with exceptions of the motors, gears, and terminal. However, despite the fact MS and MA are both midship motor chassis. Many MS chassis components, mostly the MS chassis units, are not compatible with the MA chassis. It performs much better than the MS chassis in overall performance and is better than the AR chassis in terms of stability performance despite being the heaviest chassis to date. Now, let's move on to Shellshock for the chassis stat. All right, thank you, G-Shock. So here are the stats from the MA chassis. Um, as you can see, the stats are divided to uh, toughness, acceleration, cornering, stability, adaptability, and ease of maintenance. Toughness is 4.5, acceleration is 4.5, cornering is 5, stability is 4.5, adaptability is 4.5, and ease of maintenance is 3.5 so um that's all the stats and then we're gonna build this car in two seconds all right guys so here's your ma chassis we are going to talk about it more and we're gonna build this chassis as you can see this chassis is very solid which goes to our first category which is toughness which is 4.5 as you can see this chassis is very solid as girly said earlier or aka G-Shock, this chassis is the heaviest chassis up to date until now. Um, it's also the second dual shaft chassis um, made up to date. 
Um, so the top is 4.5, which makes really a lot of sense because this chassis is very heavy. So you can see it's pretty solid. All right, the acceleration of chassis is 4.5, which makes sense to me too because it's a dual shaft motor. It's run by a dual shaft motor. That means the power transfer from the motor going to the gears are pretty much almost direct. That's why the acceleration is 4.5. The quartering stat is 5, which also makes sense to me because... Uh, the length of the chassis is 156 from here to here. And then the widest part of the chassis would be the rear, which is the 97 millimeter. So when you measure the width of the MA chassis, as you can see, um, it's slightly like, um, it's slightly wider at the rear part. You know, you, you have that option to go like wider, uh, which is the 97 millimeters, which I think that makes sense that that's why the cornering of this chassis is very fast which is perfect which is five which is the highest stat and the wheelbase is 80 millimeter from here to here for also from acceleration um the next stat that we're going to talk about um on our list would be the stability the stability of this chassis is 4.5 which is amazing um it's a uh, 0.5 less for a perfect because as you can see the chassis is very wide um again the width of the chassis is 97 millimeters total so that gives you a lot of stability which is very awesome because you don't get that a lot from all the chassis it's either one way or another but now you have um cornering stat and acceleration and stability which very high acceleration 4.5 cornering's 5 and and then the toughness 4.5 so that's very very amazing if you think about it and stability also is 4.5 so Straight from the box, this car is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, um, the adaptability of this car is 4.4, which is a little bit lesser from other cars. But you don't need that much of adaptability. But so you can see you have those holes for, for adaptability, which is also almost perfect. So you see how many holes you have? See? It's pretty crazy how this MA chassis... This is 2013, so um, the chassis is starting all this modification and also um people are very creative that time already and um cutting and trimmings are all allowed so there's a lot of modification for me this is like a big brick that you can like you know you can customize whether you're doing tune class modified tune class or just open class car all right um the ease of maintenance is 3.5 it's got it's kind of low but for my opinion that will not bother me. Uh, 3.5 maybe because there's a lot of edges and a lot of tight corners over there when you're cleaning the car. But overall, overall for me, the, the ease of maintenance will not bother me. So toughness is 4.5, acceleration is 4.5, cornering is 5, stability is 4.5, adaptability is 4.4, and ease of maintenance is 3.5. So those stats are very, very high to me. And um, that is a good box stock car for my opinion in, in any stock uh, races. Um, so, all right, so let's start building this car. Um, this, uh, when I'm building a MS chassis, I always begin with the terminals. Um, the terminals are the same as the MS chassis. So you have the same terminals um, that you can get from, uh, from the MA chassis straight out from the box. And it goes like this. See, it just snaps. It's pretty easy. Um, this one goes here. Um, and also, in my opinion, this chassis is one of the one of the most user friendly chassis. You know, it's uh, it's like a it's like a Super Two or an AR. It's a uh, it's very um, user friendly in my opinion. Um, I'm just gonna make sure I pull that. Whoa. Pull that terminal over there. Um, it's very as, as I've said, it's the same as the MA MA cha, MS chassis. So they didn't change anything when it comes to this dual shelf cars. There you go. So you have all those. Um, and here's your A parts. As you can see, uh, the rollers are also made by polyoxymethylene. Um, which makes sense. Um, as I've said, our cornering speed and our acceleration. Cornering is 5 and acceleration is 4.5. It's because of the rollers. I think because uh, the rollers are oxymethylene. 
they are very very fast compared to other rollers with the uh, o-rings and uh, old mini four-wheel drive rollers um all right so this part right here is the one that pushed the the terminals out uh which is easy let's just snap this it's all snaps there you go and you go to this part too um there you go and you just snap it all right next um part that i would uh, put when i'm building is, is i will remove those um bushings again uh, where did it go it go all the way down there so i gotta pause this all right so the bushings are also um made of polyoxymethylene um material that makes also a lot of difference um when it comes to speed and acceleration because you that means you don't need those um copper eyelets which cause more drag compared to this bushings which basically low friction bushings there you go um all right so um the gear ratio on this kit that i have is four is to one but the compatibility is four one three seven uh, three seven one and three five one so you don't need an extra gear cover or whatever like other chassis when you're building this you just need uh you just need to change the gears and uh it's all compatible all right, uh, this one that I have over here is um, is a four one gear by default, so that's what we're gonna use. And also we have this uh, fully oxymetlin uh, bushings, which is different size compared to other compared to other um, plastic bushings. So we're gonna put it over there. Oh, I'm gonna cut that edge. I don't need that. All right, we're gonna remember that you don't have to remove. You you have to remove that. All right. So it goes there. Here's your shaft. This is your gear shaft. Your gear shaft is um the same as the MS gear shaft. So you gotta remember that. So most of these parts are are same as uh MS chassis, but most of these parts too are stolen from ar there's a lot of um stuff that is similar to ar so those are your gears all right so here's your motor right here and here's your pinion gear it's pretty much the same you just slide it over there do that there you go oh. all right all right, here's the other A part. You're gonna look for this part. That is the lock. Put the lock over here. So as you can see, the lock is rotating. Uh, rotating switch. That's your. Um, that's your uh, lock switch. That's the rotating switch. All right. So when you're putting the motor, uh, you need these two parts. These two A parts over here. So as you can see, it's very similar to MS, but it's not actually the same as MS because I've tried this before and these are not the same of MS. Don't make that mistake. All right, so this head, as you can see, you just kind of like find. There you go. See, it's like Lego, like shapes or whatever. There you go. That part goes there. All right, so where the terminal is, right there, you can see those two terminals. And here's the terminal of the stock motor. And we're gonna put it over there. We're gonna slide it like this. Oops. And we're gonna snap it. There you go. So you can hear that sound. And the gears over here. Or am I doing it right? What did I mess up? There you go. And this part, this is your gear and motor cover right here. There you go. And it's very easy. It just slides over here. All right. So, but before you go do that, you have this, uh, your, your, um, wheel, um, crown gears. 
goes here. All right. And here's your shaft. Uh, I gotta collect these wheels. All right. So while we're doing this, um, again the drive shaft length is 60 millimeters from here to here. That's 60 millimeters. That makes it a lot of. Uh, I have some said for the acceleration wise which is pretty amazing because it's almost a direct gear because all the power from the motor so you have that crazy torque all right so i have those wheels all right make sure it's nice and uh, it's nice and aligned because we don't want that unaligned wheels Press it at the same time. Oops. Camera is moving. There you go. There you go. So you got, you got the first. Let's see. There you go. I'm gonna cut those edges later. There you go. All right, and then the other side, I'm gonna cut this too. Oops, sorry. Camera's getting caught. I need to cut this. This is a large diameter wheel, by the way. Some kits have a, a small diameter and medium diameter. This one's also a wide stance wheels. So. There you go. Again, this is a 4 1 gear ratio. Alright, let's put this wheels. It's kind of like tight. There you go. I just put it like that. Still tight. No. There you go. Check how smooth it is. Haven't put any grease yet. It's not that bad for box stuff. All right, so you can see that's very smooth, straight out from the box. All right, so you put your gears right here. Sorry if I'm taking a little while because uh, this is not my forte. This is uh, not my favorite chassis, but I know how to use it. All right, here's your uh, gear and motor cover. You just put it over there and then you slide it. There you go. Pretty easy, right? All right, so um, um, I'm going to put the wheels, the rubber. These are like big extra large diameter wheels that I'm trying to put as I put this um as I put this uh rubber wheels um the ground clearance of the chassis is uh, 4.8 if uh, you have a large diameter that's quite high that makes sense also um that's why um it's not perfect it's not perfect when it comes to stability it's 4.5 because some it's uh it's kind of high it's 4.5 so it can, it can tilt a little bit but with um with a low profile small diameter wheels that's 2.2 which is not that not that bad not that bad at all so that's the ground clearance of this uh of this chassis this camera is not there you go it's not behaving today all right, so we have two more. Then I remove this. Put all those wheels together. Oh my god, I like the color combination of this kit. All right, there you go. 
All right. So the ground clearance right there is again 4.8 millimeters with a large diameter so that's pretty high that's pretty high for a large diameter all right so the terminal type as i've said earlier is ms type the weight with batteries is one to one 25.9 grams which is uh heavy and without the batteries it's 78 grams which is also heavy so uh what's that's what your chassis is going to look like and here's your battery lock over here all right and there you go that's how you're gonna be your uh, MS chassis gonna look like so we're just gonna put these rollers for a final touch so um, if you guys gonna ask me um, what category I'm gonna suggest to use this is um, for me uh, in any stock races this car is gonna be amazing um, let's say the pro stock uh, race in the Philippines it would be amazing because it, it the stability and the stats and everything is already there for super stock and you can also use some other parts besides stock because you can mix and match and change the motor super stock and pro stock uh, i will suggest this chassis too when it comes to box stock this is going to be amazing because you have those toughness, acceleration, cornering, stability, and adaptability covered just straight out from the box. And you don't need any further modification, which is good for box stock because you can't really change anything for box stock. So I will highly, highly suggest this for box stock. For tune class, I will suggest this too. But in my personal uh, experience, um, because the, the toughness is also... A weakness for this chassis when it comes to modify class because although the car is tough if you put a higher motor and without cu cutting when it comes to basic tune class it's rigid so the landing is not really forgiving when it comes to this chassis although although it's stable but the landing is gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be tough because the impact there will be no any absorption when it comes to impact Especially if you're using a faster motor, like a tune motor, like, you know, it's an upgrade motor, so it will be way faster compared to a stock motor. It will not be forgiving when you use this chassis because a lot of racers are using this for box stock, which makes sense for me because stats-wise and paper-wise, if you can look at the stats, um, this chassis looks really amazing by paper. But there's one weakness that they have that they haven't noticed even though it's considered as a positive stat as i put these rollers by the way that's how you put your rollers you put washer first you know the drill um uh as i've said yeah even though the toughness is high it's also one weakness because when the car jumps the landing is not forgiving because the car is pretty solid and unforgiving so when you use this for basic tune class it's kind of tough so my personal there's some ways to compensate that weakness but for me i will not use this for tune class unless i'm racing a tune class race with digicurve because i need that toughness to be tough when it goes to digicurve or rocking straight tune class for a modified tune class i would suggest this because you can actually compensate that for a lightweight you know you can lightweight this car you can make this you can make this um very very light and you can compensate that that weakness of this chassis um to uh build a modified tune class car and also uh when it comes to modified class obviously i will highly suggest this because it's not just because the stats are nice straight out from the box you have less modification to do because you know the stats are already high so there's a lot of comp there's a less compensation that you need to do you just have to need to make the car a little bit flexible if you put a higher motor when it comes to open class and it really helps depends how you modify your car but this is very user friendly and it, this is one of the go to um go to chassis of other racers um i it just happened that it's not my favorite but i i also have a built like this and you know it gets the job done for me it's not my favorite but i will highly recommend it all right um um and also um the the down trust the roller down, down trust as i put these rollers is five degrees 
all right by default straight out from the box so that's also good and that's how this overall box stock setup is very amazing by the paper as i've said um the stability is good for this chassis all right as you can see that angle is five degrees so that's the roller down thrust over there that's why the stability stat is quite high all right so we just have one more roller to put and we are going to be done here and um yeah so if you like this video let's hit like if you don't like this video hit dislike I don't really mind and you know if you dislike this video or you like this video put your uh, your comments uh, let me know uh, what you think about MS chassis and some things that I didn't mention there or I didn't know and what's your personal experience with the MS chassis but for all the racers out there thank you for all following me um, we're almost done with our chassis series we're on our MA chassis and the next chassis would be the FMA but this is what your MA chassis gonna look like um Here's a skid bar right here. This is one uh, part that MA chassis robbed from AR. <laughs> I think the MA chassis robbed from AR. <laughs> All right. So, you know, they're kind of similar to MS and similar to AR chassis too. That's what Tamira, Tamiya did. All right. So the skid bar goes over here. You have the option not to put it or you put it, but I'm put, gonna put it anyway so I can show you guys how you can fully build an MA chassis. I'm not gonna put grease because it will take a lot of your time and I know you guys don't like a lot of videos, long videos, but if I cut the videos, I try to cut the videos as short as possible, but I don't want to miss anything on my video, that's why. I'm putting all uh, all the information that you guys need. All right, so I'm almost done here. I'm almost done here. All right, so you got that. Uh, before I miss, this is the lock on your body shell or whatever body shell you're gonna put all right, so this is shell shop from c t u s a mini four wheel drive racing squad. I'm a teacher here in new works so I'm going to transfer you guys to Roscoe, and Roscoe will give you some tips for um, uh, for Modify Class MA Chassis. So he will go in-depth more. So as I've said, he's my guest today. Uh, this is Shell Shop from CTSA Mini 4 Wheel Drive Racing Squad, and I'm a teacher in your works, and hope you learn something. As I always say, we learn from you, you learn from us. Always race humble. Roscoe, take it out. Hello everyone, this is Roscoe from Roscoe Channel and today I'm going to share my experience and some of my knowledge regarding the MA chassis. So I've made some points about it, so we're going to run them down one by one. But first I want to thank you for Seal Shock from USA for having me and giving me the chance to share my knowledge to all of you guys. Okay, so let's begin. The first point about uh, the things that we're going to review is about the cornering and the speed of MA chassis. So the things that I've known is because of the design of the MA chassis and because it is a double chef machine, it, it can give you a great cornering ability and also the speed because of the aerodynamic design of the chassis, it will give you a great speed. Okay. And also about the toughness of the chassis, yeah, I also experienced about that this chassis is being so strong, it, uh, it's hardly get broken because sometimes when I made one car with this chassis, it can last about six months or probably more, it depends on how you mod or how you modify the chassis and also the frequency of uh, racing, okay? And... The next is about, I've, I've got so many questions about this, uh, which one is better? Is it using the bumperless or the non-bumperless setup? So it actually depends on your own preferences, but I prefer not to cut the bumper because I want to use the front uh, down, down thrust, okay, front angle, because I think it's already enough 
to pass most of the lane change and also to give enough stability but it uh, also depends on the layout itself sometimes if i think or if i felt that uh, the front angle is not enough then i will add another angle plate on top of the chassis so it will give the car more downforce and it will help the car better to pass the lane change okay so it actually depends on you and if you use the bumperless setup you don't forget that the underside of the MA chassis see it, it can give you like an upward angle so you need to give an uh, quite a bit of angle plate with enough degree to counter the upward angle from the underside of the chassis okay and then for the front underside because of the upward angle from the uh, bottom side of the chassis can also help you help you with the brake setup okay so you just need uh, probably cover them with Tamiya tape like this helps you with the brake setup okay so you just need uh, probably cover them with Tamiya tape like this one or you can trim a bit so you can make an upward angle from your brake and that way you can climb the uh, the bank section faster but it still can slow you down around the slope so it will give you a stability around the slopes but it can help you climb the banks a lot more faster if you adjust the brake setup in the front side okay and the next is about the rear ground clearance uh, modification so the things that i found with MA chassis, the rear side is a kind of limited if you uh, don't modify it so i've shown this how to modify it the rear parts in my own channel but you can see in here that i've added two extra plate on top of the this part okay so you can see right here these two plate and by giving the, that extra plate you can see that my rear ground clearance is quite high even though I'm using this 24 millimeter tires so you can see right here okay so because you need an extra ground clearance to climb the banks a lot faster all right and also I've been getting a question about which one is better the front body damper or the rear body damper so my uh, I will share just uh, from my own experience previously I used the rear body damper and from what I've observed the car tends to jump after hitting the slope the car usually jumps like this you know giving this an upward angle and it will land on the rear side first followed by the front side Okay, and after I use the front body damper, the car usually tends to jump like this and it will kind of nose dive. So in my own opinion, uh, the, I need the nose dive because usually uh, in here they give the slope section and then the receiver after that is just like or two or three pieces. So I need my car to enter the track faster because if you give the nose dive like this, this is the straight section followed by the curved section, you can still uh, be safe from getting course out. And if you land like this, okay, and this is already, you're entering the curved section, you will be late and the car can go uh, outside of the track. So in my own preferences is using the front weighted damper and to land the car in this nose dive uh, fashion okay and by giving the, that extra plate you can see that my rear ground clearance is quite high even though i'm using this 24 millimeter tires so you can see right here okay so because you need an extra ground clearance to climb the banks a lot faster all right and also I've been getting a question about which one is better the front body damper or the rear body damper so my uh, I will share just uh, from my own experience previously I used the rear body damper and from what I've observed the car tends to jump after hitting the slope the car usually jumps like this you know giving this an upward angle and it will land 
on the rear side first followed by the front side. Okay, and after I use the front body damper, the car usually tends to jump like this and it will kind of nose dive. So in my own opinion, uh, the, I need the nose dive because usually uh, in here they give the slope section and then the receiver after that is just like or two or three pieces. So I need my car to enter the track faster because if you give the nose dive like this, this is the straight section followed by the curved section, you can still uh, be safe from getting course out. And if you land like this, okay, and this is already, you're entering the curved section, you will be late and the car can go uh, outside of the track. So in my own preferences is using the front body damper and to land the car in this nose dive uh, fashion. Okay, so, and the last thing is about transmission. Uh, you can see it right here. I didn't do much about the transmission. I only give Tamiya tape in here, okay? I've already shown this also in my own video on my Roscoe channel, on my YouTube channel. And it's just to prevent the pink gear to move around from left to right and it will give you a better transmission. It will reduce the friction and also it will help with the acceleration and also the speed of your car. All right. So I think that's uh, the, you know, the things that you need to be aware of or the things that you need to know about MA chassis. And I guess that's all that I can share to you guys. And I hope uh, you can start to experiment with more things in MA chassis or another chassis and wish you good luck. Thank you and here, here you go. And right back to you Silsha. Thank you.